So can you introduce yourself to some of the people who may not know you within this session? Yeah, sure. I'm Shireen. Um, I'm American from Minnesota specifically, um, but I live in the UK. So um, that's confusing for people sometimes <laughs> because, sure. yeah, I don't have a British accent, but I'm in the UK. Mm. Um, yeah, I've been teaching for 10 years. I've taught kids. I've taught adults. That's me. Fantastic. Great. And how is it being an American in the UK? Is there any challenges? Um, oh, that's a good question. I mean, it's not that different culturally. Like we're quite yeah, of similar. Um, the humor, the humor is an issue. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <sure. laughs> but mm. yeah, other than that, I think, no, it's, it's not the rain, the humor. There we go. Yeah, definitely. It's um, something that I think most nationalities have a problem with is both of those things, to be honest. Uh, it's, not <laughs> all, it's not all the queen and tea as you, and fish and chips as you expect, you know. Yeah. So, I mean, but the fish and chips are good. <laughs> yeah, 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 they're not bad. They're not bad. You've obviously got a good uh, supplier. Yeah. So that's good. Uh, fantastic. So um, how about the words that's used? between the two languages have you found any issues with some you know in, in England we use a lot of slang so true have you found issues? um you know I I think that it's interesting in the sense that even when you're a native speaker um you you can go to a different a different part of your own country or another English speaking country and there's a lot of things you have to learn and um yeah, sometimes I have to ask. I don't know. I don't know what you're trying to tell me right now. You know. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> trying to think of an example, but um, nothing's coming to my mind right away. That's right. No worries. Yeah. Yeah. England has quite a few different. Um, it's almost like going into a different country when you go to a different county sometimes, um, because the the personality is a little different in each place. Uh, yeah. especially when you cross the border as well. Like Scottish people are very different to English people, I think. So yeah. it's super interesting to see the difference considering the area is very small in comparison to America where there's a very vast area. True, yeah, I never thought of that. Yeah, that is true. Hmm. I think that in America, generally, you know, like East Coast, West Coast, hmm. Midwest, w we have a lot in common by areas, but our... Areas are probably as big as the entire country yeah, of yeah. England. I think each state is, isn't it? And probably bigger than the UK. Yeah. yeah. yeah apart from Hawaii, obviously. Yeah. Um, so, cool. That's great. So, are you enjoying living in the UK? Yeah, yeah, I do like it here. I do. You know, I, this is the first place. I'm in Manchester, everyone. Um, and it's the first city I've lived in that's walkable. So um, it's nice to live in a place where you can oh, really? walk that's everywhere. That's super interesting. Yeah. yeah that's that's so. really interesting uh, comment you've made. Okay, yeah, cool. Yeah, I've never lived anywhere where you don't need a car. Um, and I've, I think that's one of my favorite things so far about living here. Yeah, yeah, totally. It's, it's, that is, that's really, really interesting because Manchester's not small. Manchester is a very big city for in terms of UK standards. Maybe the second largest. Do you think? Yeah, I think it's the second largest. I mean, largest. it is known. It is, yeah. But like in actual, I don't know what they mean when they say it's the second largest. Suburbs. In... It's all suburbs, always with England. Every city is, everything that's just, even on the outskirts still counts. Okay, because like the town, the actual, you know, I'm in the, in the city, um, you can walk from one side to the other side, like, easily. <laughs> mm -hmm. So, uh, I guess, yeah, but the suburbs. Yeah. yeah, no, that's super interesting. So, you are you on about the main, uh, high, not the high street, that's a bit vague, that's a bit uh, small, but the main area of uh, shopping, or like the main district where most people would go, uh, yeah, so like I'm in downtown. I, I I never need to leave. Like, there's no reason to ever go unless I want to go to like IKEA. You know, <laughs> mm, <for sure. laughs> 
<laughs> there's everything in town that I can walk to. If I want to go buy clothes, it's there. If I want to go to the supermarket, it's there. The doctor, it's there. I mean, everything's right at my doorstep. So I absolutely love that because I've always had to have a car. And this is the first time I don't have a car. So. Oh, wow. That's, that's really interesting. Yeah. I suppose the distance is much faster in the U.S. compared to in England. So we, could, we, have, we have no choice, I suppose. Everything has to be in one yeah. small area. Yeah. So, I mean, I see a comment that says most cities in Europe are quite walkable, but like, I don't think London is walkable. From... Uh, hmm. Depends for what your mindset is and how good your music is. But yeah, I know what you mean. <laughs> yeah, good, yeah. But every time I've been to London, I've had to take the, the tube. I'm trying to see if mm. this... But they're, they're, that person is kind of like half correct in what they're saying, because... I don't know how far you ventured. I mean, sorry, let's take a step back. How far, how long have you been in the UK for? Um, I've been living here a year. Mm, so have you had the chance to venture to any other countries? Um, since I've been here, I mean, in this year, I've only gone to, yeah, I've only gone to Italy. I went to mm. Venice. Um, but I've been lots of places in Europe earlier you know oh, right. every every american does the europe trip so <laughs> i've done that europe trip oh see so yeah, yeah. No. <laughs> that's fair enough um i think like when i visited a few cities in in europe most of them are kind of walkable i get what they mean by that but i okay. think when you're on holiday your mindset's a little different you know as to when you live in a place so you want to explore. I think when you're used to it, you don't. You're not interested mm. in that that method in necessarily in walking so far. So you don't think of it as walkable. Do you get what I mean? By that's kind of a strange way of putting it, but yeah, do you no, get what I mean. Yeah, I guess so. Although usually, I, I'm thinking when you travel places, maybe public transportation is a bit scary. So <laughs> yeah, that's true as well. Yeah, because of the language barrier. Yeah. So yeah, for sure. Um, I know even in Manchester, the... I was scared to take the bus for a long time. I still kind of I, am, to I be honest. I still be scared. Personally. I'm still scared. <laughs> <laughs> I Manchester still don't know how some... to ask for a ticket. <laughs> mm, but maybe Manchester's reasons are slightly different to language barriers, you know. But, yeah. It's, it's, yeah. That's good, though, that you've... Um... What made you move to England? Um, well, so my boyfriend's from Manchester, first of all. Mm -hmm. And also, I... So, okay. A little background. <laughs> I was living in Abu Dhabi, so well, I was yeah. teaching there, and um, I wanted to get a master's degree, so I came to Manchester, um, to the University of Manchester. So, yes. yeah. Fair enough. Um, what do you think the term the Queen, Queen's English means? What does that mean Ooh, to you? It's the super posh. The <laughs> super posh. Mm. <laughs> Um, yeah, that's, it's London, isn't it? I don't, well, I don't know if it is, you know, London's quite multicultural, so. <laughs> this is true, sorry, that's about. absolutely right, yeah. But no, I understand what you're saying. I think, I just ask because many people say it, you know, I've had many, when I was teaching online, I had many students ask me, like, about the Queen's English, and I think, like, it's super difficult to explain. I couldn't teach it, I don't think, because it's just... It's his style of its own, you know, mm. and, and some wordage is very different to what I'm used to anyway, for sure. I, d I, I mean, I don't know if I'm right, but I don't think that many people speak the Queen's English. No. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's, it's, it's like it's a super class based language, I feel. So yeah. it's the, really the, what people would pref prefer to think of themselves as like the higher class. And yeah. people speak it because they want to be in that level, if you get what I mean. Yeah, but what I've but. experienced from living in the UK is that also a lot of people make fun of it. So, mm. <laughs> just to be blunt, that's... <laughs> yeah, sure. Yeah, totally. It does. It's, but, you know, I think I've, the Queen's a super interesting topic for people in England. So just like there's very one side or the other, it's really Marmite. 
is the best way I can explain it. Do you know what I mean by that? Marmite is like this product, if you haven't encountered it in England, it's like a yeast extract. Uh, I mean, I've, I think I might have tasted it once, but go on. It's like a 50-50 people, you either love it or you hate it kind of yeah. product. And uh, the queen is kind of like that. And the English side comes along with that uh, bad stigma for some people. But yeah, yeah. Yeah, many people try to use it to up their class. So it's a super interesting um, aspect. But then Manchester has a very thick accent of its own. Yeah, yeah definitely. And even each part of Manchester has a different, mm. different accent. It's yeah, interesting. Totally. Um, yeah, oh, I'll... one of my favorite things in Manchester that I've learned is um, that for thank you, they say ta. I love it. Yeah, yeah. No, I use that as well. I think <laughs> oh, do you? English. I thought yeah, it was think... just Man Manchester. No, so that's a British thing, yeah. Tar's proper, proper. I didn't, I didn't know what that meant. <laughs> mm, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, I use it. I, since moving away and becoming a teacher, I've noticed how many, I don't know what to call it, Brit Britishisms that okay. we have, you know, and um, it's really crazy. It's really crazy. We have like so many shortcuts in Brit in British English and uh, like mm. we're very, very, as a nation, I think we're very, very far away from textbook language. Yeah. I think um, we cut so many corners, it's crazy. It really is. So yeah. to, for people, when they say they want to speak like a native speaker, for me, that's kind of like, uh, do you? <laughs> you know, because the, the so, there's so, it's not like textbook style. I mean, that's yeah. just a different style in its own, but. I've noticed such little things too. I just, I just thought of one. Um, you know, I was in a shop the other day and I bought something and I said um, to the server, have a good day. And they replied, and you. And an American, that you wouldn't say that in American English. That's not a reply. You wouldn't say, and you. You'd say, you too, you as well, <laughs> but not mm. and you. And these are just like the tiny tiny nuances of language, the differences between languages. Um, yeah. I mean, ac dialects, whatever. Um, but they're interesting. And I think that makes it hard to talk like a native speaker. Like I, I couldn't impersonate a, a British, <laughs> British native speaker. So. Mm. Yeah, it's interesting. Have you had this question asked to you before? A statement said they want us, a student wants to sound wants to be like a native speaker and how yes, would you respond I, to that oh, why <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah there's no need to there's absolutely no need to hmm. yeah yeah i'd almost part of me almost wants to say i've said it before but part of me also almost wants to like shout out to everyone i think most learners actually have a better structure than most native speakers because we are so relaxed with the language and don't concentrate on it as hard hmm. As a learner, you know. Definitely. And I've, uh, you know, um, in DMs when I've chatted with some learners, um, they'll question things that I've written that are not grammatically correct, but yeah, sure. they're just how we speak. <laughs> mm. yeah, yeah, that's super interesting. Yeah. Yeah, I, 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 I completely feel the same. <laughs> like, I have those moments as well. I almost feel... Uh, conscientious no that's not the right word i just worry about everything i write because i write it so relaxed you know yeah and don't i don't think like even i was about to ask you what do you think about autocorrect is it a good thing or a bad thing in terms of learning a language oh um oh but for us know. it's not for us, it's really good, but it makes us very lazy. For me, 100%, my, mm. my spelling has got worse because I'm used to that predictive. Yeah, I agree as well. Definitely spelling. My spelling is also not as good because of autocorrect, I think. Um, oh, I don't know what I was going to say. I just think that, that you know, being self-conscious of the way you write, maybe, it's a different place, you know, the way you're going to write mm -hmm. on Instagram or the way you're going to text your friend is completely different than the way you're going to write an email 100 in agree, your yeah. workplace or, um, 
how you're going to write academically. I was just chatting with someone saying like, I love academic writing. I really, really like it, but it's a completely different, I'm not going to write like that when I'm texting. But, mm. just, but yeah. as a learner, you don't learn like that. You know, as a learner, you just get taught this is the structure. You don't learn like when we talk informally, we can cheat a little. It's the best way to put it. You yeah. Know? And I think that's a real problem for learners, really. It's a bit unfair, isn't it? Like, we, yeah. we don't play by the rules in that kind of aspect. It's how we, we learn through context, right? Yeah, yeah, 100% so. As someone asked the question, what is the biggest difference that we think between American and British English? Vocabulary. Oh, again, I don't again. <laughs> Sorry, every you session, every session, yeah, every <laughs> session, every session, without fail. It's kind of like my thing. Go on, sorry. Um, yeah, I think it's vocabulary, it is, isn't it? Yeah. Definitely vocabulary. I know the accent's different, but there's no. I don't know how everyone listening feels, but I don't think it's that hard to understand either of us. You know, hmm. American, British. Um, as far as it's the all way speed, we speak. though, is I think that's the most, that's the key thing. In a, depending on accent, is the speed can make it quite confusing. Like a, I'm I only know from England, obviously. So like a Liverpudlian accent is super fast, and then Irish uh. is also super fast. So I think although there's like tendencies, like Scottish is speaks from the throat, but you know speed has such a big thing to do with it as well. So that must create such a big difficulty for learners. I think that also in, again, I don't speak with this like confidently because I'm new in England, but mm. um, the, the filler words in, at least in the North are kind of throw me off. You have to get used to them. You know, when they, they say like, I don't know me, they put in extra words that are unnecessary. <laughs> so, um, I like them, me. <laughs> so if they're mm. talking fast and you have these extra words in there, that I think that can be confusing. Because, again, that's not grammatically correct as well. That's just Not at all. <laughs> yeah. Just, we like to use like a lot as well. I don't know if you've noticed. We, we put a lot of like, likes mm. into our sentences. It's a breather a lot of the time. Yeah. You know, it's not like a a contrasting thing or something actually showing an yeah. expression of something you enjoy is just uh, have just a breather and then and then following on the sentence so it's that's super confusing because mm. that's like one of the first thing learners learn and then they have this word appear all the time within a within a conversation yeah so, yeah kind of off topic but the irish do that with the word so they throw mm. so around like are you coming so like mm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's yeah. crazy, isn't it? But it's yeah. interesting. I think that's what makes uh, it's awful for learners. But I think it's an in, <laughs> if you're interested in in venturing out from just the British and American, which is what everyone seems to focus their energy on. If you're wanting to just have a break and just listen to something else and realize how like in depth the language is, I think yeah. there's a lot you can almost have a break on you know like just kind of like a challenge you try to listen to like an irish conversation or an irish tv show and then you realize whoa are you okay so let's just stick to american and british you know? irish <laughs> and scottish is hard it's hard for me yeah for me as well <laughs> for me as well yeah. it's just one of those what do you think about we don't talk, we talk mainly about british and, and american english Mm -hmm. That's the main focus for a lot of learners. But obviously there's Canadian and Australian. So do you feel that they should also... Uh, do you think there's a big difference between... I mean, a lot of people say American and uh, Canadian is similar and Australian and British is similar. Do you think that is why they're not spoken about much as like a topic for learning? Hmm. I guess they're, they're, yeah, they're chunked in with Canadians like American, Australians like British, right? Mm. Yeah, it feels like it. Yeah. So I just, uh, 
I feel sorry for every Canadian and British and American, sorry, Canadian and Australian person who, <laughs> whenever they get asked about if they're an online learner, people must say, let's practice American English or British English. Yeah. As someone's mentioned, can you talk about one of the challenges you've faced in teaching? One of the challenges? Ooh. Um, I mean, I'm thinking people who pretend they want to learn, but they don't actually want to learn. Mm. <laughs> Trying to make my thing good. Okay. Um, what about you? What are some challenges you've faced? Yeah, obviously that's, I think that's always going to be a, a situation, you know, um, where a learner learns for the sake of learning in a sense, mm. but they feel they have to learn. You know, they, I can't explain it very well, but, you know, they have this, they know they need to learn English and then they take a teacher just because they have to learn English of, without working out what their best way of learning is. Yeah. So, and then they get stuck in a bit of a rut, you know, and, mm -hmm. and uh, can't move forward. And they think that one lesson will help them improve yeah. completely. Oh, That's yeah. That's a bit of an issue. People who think that, like, okay, in two weeks, I'm going to be fluent. Um, <laughs> yeah, man, that, I, that kills me. Those, those, yeah. um, those adverts for courses that are, like, right. fluent in three months, <sighs> that, that yeah. kills me because how much can you actually do in three months course-wise? No, course and even wise, so, yeah. even so, like, fluency is influenced by more than just the course you take. Um, some people can learn a lot in a year and some people won't learn much in 10 years. So, mm. you know, it's, it's not, there's not a magic number. <laughs> no, no. I, I think like, for me, fluency is more than just the basics. And I think three months is only, if a court, if we're talking about a course, yeah. Yeah. Three months is only like, can only be like really basic. Well, just like a, just over the basic line, maybe getting into intermediate if you're that level. So for me, it's really tough to say that you become fluent. Fluent's like I understand most of the conversation. It's actually more to do with speech, but hmm. for me, even though it's mostly to do with speech, I, I take that as understanding and responding. Yeah. And um, understanding the situation and how I respond without too many gaps in the speech, you know, too many pauses. Uh, I don't, uh, with a course online especially, how can you practice like that amount of um, speech? Speech is the most important part for fluency. Mm. So how can you practice your speech and improve it in three months is, uh, for me, has always been a bit no. crazy. But. Yeah, no, and I think that, I mean, I studied French for a very, very long time. And um, I mean, I had very little uh, speaking practice outside of the classroom. And... When I listen to French, I can understand the majority, you know, but I, I can barely speak. So, like, am I fluent in listening? <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's, <laughs> a, yeah, it's super interesting. Uh, yeah. For me, problem, though, my biggest issue probably is uh, confidence. Has, mm. like, confidence for the student them understanding when they're improving that is the biggest problem for sure for yeah me. so like they have a, a they cannot see because it's impossible like physically see but they cannot see when they have taken a step forward because it's, it's not so easy to to quantify you know yeah. um, without any kind of recording or something along the line so that was an issue i found uh, so they thought like the teaching wasn't very effective, even though like half the time online anyway, from my experience, you're brushing up on someone's technique half in that one hour session. And, yeah. Uh, improving it a bit. How about you? Yeah, you're, you're definitely right. Um, I think so from my experience, I, I've also taught kindergarten um, oh, yeah. for a while and that was where it was the most obvious where like, I mean, for a teacher, 
obviously the kids don't know that they're learning. <laughs> it's different than adult learning. They don't know that they're going to school to learn. They're just, you know, there to play. Um, and they would learn so much and it would be so obvious because it was like zero to something. Um, and, and like you said, I think in adults, especially when they're at that level, like an intermediate, um, and I think that's the hardest space is the intermediate. Um, they don't, they, they don't see them getting self, they don't see themselves getting better. Like, like you said, um, and I, I don't know, how do you, how do you help them with that? It's tough, isn't it? It is <laughs> yeah. tough. It's, it's a confidence game. It always will be. And people are in a rush, you know, because mm. of life, because of life, they want to get out of whatever situation they're in. And English is, for some people, is the answer. Yeah. But also, if they're not speaking, they're not going to know if they've made progress, there's no way for them yeah. to know, you know, if, if they're not producing what they've learned. Yeah. I think, I can't, thinking now, just popped into my head, one of the worst things that uh, gets mentioned is, uh, for me personally, someone who wants to practice for a test, like an IELTS, yeah. or um, something similar, TEFL or something similar to that, and then they ask me, to practice with a speaking, but they want to be stopped with every mistake they make. And mm. for me, that's like a killer because, you know, for those tests, we need to really work on literally fluency, like how yeah. fast are you, you speak in, not too fast, not too slow. Are you making many pauses? But you cannot build up fluency if you're being paused every five seconds for every small error that's inconsistent. Yeah. You know, some even, even native speakers make an, the odd error, yeah? Yeah. But in terms of a uh, learner, perfection's great. But I think for those kind of tests, you don't need to be, even in the structure, they even say you can make an error. So they don't expect you to be perfect. But I think it's difficult for a learner to see that as well. Mm. Mm. It's true. Yeah. I, I also just, I struggle with the studying for the IELTS, for example, because mm. I think that a lot of people, I mean, it should be prepared for, if, if you know that that's going to be a goal, it, it should be kind of years, <laughs> not just a, a month of preparing for it. Yeah, I mean, yeah, it's, definitely. It's building a language, so. Yeah, for sure. But I think I, I really, from what I've looked at of all the tests, and like tests are never perfect, obviously. They only have a certain certain ability they can do you know there's only mm. certain thing they can judge i think ielts is pretty good i like the speaking test like it the one thing i like about it is not just like how does climate change affect you know or something <laughs> stupid like that it's like real life questions for the most of it and then a bit of a extended so mm. i kind of like that part of the test especially when uh, watching and working with students but it's difficult isn't it i mean like you say it's not a it's not a two month thing. No, it's you supposed can improve to be in two months, but you can't. Yeah, be like... but it's supposed to be the test is supposed to give a genuine dem demonstration of your language ability, and your language ability cannot be it, like you said. It can be improved, but it can't be built. Rome wasn't built in a day. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, hundred yeah. percent agree. Uh, here's an interesting question for you then, so or maybe just interesting for me. Hopefully not. So, obviously, these tests, they have the main four pillars, you know, listening, uh, reading, writing, and speaking. Yeah. But how important, actually, will writing be in the future? Ooh, you're asking somebody who loves writing. I know. That's why I like the question. <laughs> <laughs> Mm, you know, when I was teaching high school English, I used to always tell the students, I don't care what you want to be when you grow up, you're going to need English because you're going to need to write emails. And I mean, mm -hmm. in order to be intelligible, you have to be able to write. And I'm going to stick with it and say, you need to know how to write. <laughs> good. No, good. I think that's good. It's in, it's just for me, it's like I'm, I'm a very 
my favorite game is to be devil's advocate so <laughs> like i really enjoy those kind of moments of because it's a really interesting conversation for me because you know um with social media with with the internet you you almost don't need to go to school because everything's there but it's not mm. in like a directed approach you know school helps you with like direction but everything's available for you if you really want it you can yeah. find it but um you know as in writing we especially informal it's awful really the amount of acronyms we use so not awful mm. but just this moved on a little so as a and the fact that we just use our phones for everything you know you're right that for a, if you're looking to move forward within business you definitely need some kind of structure and mm. um but in schools we mainly teach with pen and paper so do you think that will change huh. i don't know if they i mean with pen and paper i don't think that's necessarily really the it's less now i mean tests are being taken on the computer um i mean this is also probably based uh, different in different countries but um yeah sure i i think that pen and paper is being used less and i think that it should be used more <laughs> oh okay that's that's super cool i like it i like it yeah, i think no, that now people are giving like starting off by giving their kids ipads and stuff like that and now they've got this great skill um to like use their finger to do things but like the muscles in your hands get really strong from the pen yeah, not sure. the finger <laughs> no i've i've got a feeling it'll be one of those reverse things so like for example when i was a kid i never wanted a tattoo because i knew by the time i'd be 30 that i would be probably one of the only people without a tattoo and i okay. think it would be or a piercing one of the two England, many people have piercing or a tattoo of evil. Yeah. Um, whereas I think it may be similar with writing. So people in the future, maybe in 10, 20 years, maybe people who, maybe there won't be so much writing and then that will be a sort out skill. Hmm. Kind of like, I don't know if you know much about Japanese, but calligraphy, painting the characters, is like a sort out skill. I wonder if a written word will be similar. In a, in a kind of aspect, if you get what I mean. Well, yeah. Um, I mean, I was thinking about how in the UK, I assume in the US too, I actually don't know, um, they still teach cursive writing to in schools. And it's kind of silly. I mean, I don't know. But it's, it's a nice skill, but it's not... I mean, when do you write in cursive? Yeah. Like... <laughs> um, and, you know, they grade the children on their ability to write in, in cursive. So yeah, I think yeah, that a, will die. That's so. an old hat thing, isn't it, for sure? Mm. Mm. Yeah. That's, that's a super, super interesting. Yeah. I, because, oh, yeah, that's, that's tough for sure. Yeah. Um, so, sorry, I, I am well behind on any comments. Yeah. So let's move back to that. We'll try and fire through a batch here. So what are some teaching techniques that you've used and found very effective? I stick with um, this, that, that when you teach, it's not so much about your teaching, but it's about mm -hmm. the student. Yep. So you have to take, you have to make the effort to get to know what your student likes, what they prefer, I don't think that there is like one way that's the right way because everyone has different preferences and um, you know, you can get ready-made lessons online. Um, but if I can choose to teach you about something that you're interested in, chances are you're going to get a lot more out of it. Um, so that's what I think it's about. I think I that, love you for saying that, that because that yeah. is literally my thesis as well. Um, I feel the amount you can associate with something that someone enjoys who definitely goes in the long-term memory rather than short personally. Yeah. Um, also, do you think that language need... Uh, also, do you think that your language needs improvement and what do you do to make it better? That's a super Ooh. horrible question and interesting. Yeah. Well. 
Um, yes, I think that everyone's language always needs improvement. I know that, you know, when you listen to a podcast or something and you are super inspired by the way someone speaks, whether it's Mm. their, whether it has to do with their word choice, their vocabulary, their charisma when they speak. Um, Yes, I want my language to improve. Definitely. (laughs) Mm. And I'm 100% in agreement with you there because I don't think anyone in the world knows 100% of their language. No. I think that's a killer for learners because they think it's a 100% thing, you know, mm. which is a lot of subjects can be, but language isn't. It always evolves. And um, do you know my recent passion? I've had a few. My recent one is like learning new words, not new words, but comparing American and British terms. So like okay. I have a kid, so like we use pushchair. What's a pushchair, oh. do you know? Yeah, uh, pushchair is a weight. A stroller. Yeah, exactly. Stroller. Yeah. Which a stroller to me is a is a weird term in itself because I don't not I I rarely, super rarely use the word stroll. So it's not really in my vocabulary like it obviously is, but not like obviously not used so often like to go for, go go out for a stroll sounds very posh to me. Oh really? <laughs> yeah, yeah. So for me that's super interesting. Um uh, and just, trolley. Just... Trolley. I call it a, a grocery cart. <laughs> Oh, yeah, cart. Yeah, of course. Yeah. So for me, that's super interesting. And um, yeah, yeah, just I've learned a lot of new words that way because I work in an American school. So it's super interesting to hear the difference. Mm. You'll have to if you haven't. um, There is I can't remember what they're called, but there's a YouTube um, couple. Uh, mm. an American woman married know. to a British guy. If you can find it, send me the link because my friend showed me a video. It was absolutely incredible. I loved it. But and I, they I have don't a have baby. Link anymore. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's so good that video. So I want to see it again, but I don't know the mm. I don't know the the channel obviously, so but that is super lush that video is so good. Yeah. He <laughs> argues with her and says, um, it's a nap <coughs> it's a nappy, not a diaper. It's a yeah, nappy, yeah, yeah. not a diaper. And she says, Well, I change diapers, I don't change nappies. So if yeah, it's a yeah. nappy, you do it. <laughs> yeah, it's super cute as well. I like yeah. that. Uh, is it good having two different accents? I mean American and British as well. That's a good question. Hmm. To, uh, I mean, okay, well, you kind of have to pick one to, if you want to, for your speaking, I would pick one. doesn't matter which one, but pick one. Um, but I think it's really good to be familiar with the different terms, but also it totally depends on what your goal is. If you're going to move to England, learn British English, (laughs) um, and make an effort to learn that. But if you're going to move to the U.S. or Canada, then learn that English. That's yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's super interesting. I think you can't be you can't be uh, how can I say you can't be half pregnant in between the two. <laughs> you know, uh, just pick one. Like you say, is perfect way to say it. Really, pick yeah. one, concentrate on it. Don't. It doesn't matter. It really doesn't matter. No. At the end of the day. Um, I find British people say sorry a lot more than Americans do. Ah, you're in a good position to judge this. So what do you hmm. think? Okay, well, here's <clears throat> where I would debate that comment. I am from Minnesota, which is mm-hmm. known as, I'm not even joking, it's the nicest state in America. <laughs> That's because you're from there. No, no, okay. no, no. It's our slogan. It's Minnesota nice. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and... Um, like the Canadians, <sighs> yeah. Like the Canadians, we also apologize a lot. Um, if you bump into me, I will probably say sorry. <laughs> mm. But I don't know. Do the British say sorry a lot? Yeah, yeah, definitely. We always. I think it's super interesting, really, because when I came to here, not many people apologize. Well, they, not not the same like England anyway. England for me, maybe it's just my personality, but I always just automatically apologise even if I do something wrong. Hmm. So <clears throat> for me, that's an interesting question. But I don't know anything about America, so 
Maybe not. Maybe you had the wrong information. I'm trying to think uh, about people saying <coughs> sorry to me. Um, yeah, maybe. But, but you live in Manchester, so maybe there's some rougher people there. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously joking. That's there's funny, some nice parts yeah. as well. How many words is normal to learn basic English and have life in English in <clears throat> and have to be able to live a life in an English language country? English I have not country. a clue. Yeah, that's kind of uh, very difficult to quantify <laughs> again, isn't it? <clears throat> um, a lot, that's for sure. Enough to be able to... What I would say is enough to be able to get by for the first month. Because once yeah, you're there... <clears throat> once what you're is there, enough, though? Yeah, <laughs> I don't know what enough is. Even, like, I mean, my Japanese is very bad. But I live here in Japan. Enough is like going to the store or saying please and thank you, being able to ask for something. I can't give you a number, but I can say that if you, I mean, you could know 10,000 words but not be able to string a sentence. Yeah. You know, it's more about what you can say. So I would say as long as you can speak enough to get by, be able to ask for things, to be able to apologize, to be able to not necessarily explain, but just be able to say, so someone says, where do you want to go? And you can say a one word answer. That's fine for the minimum. But once you're in the environment, it'll expand exponentially. It'll just go crazy. Yeah. So, yeah. That's actually, you, that's really true. Because if you don't know how to string a sentence and you want to say like, where's the, where's the post office? You really mm. only need the word post office, post office. <laughs> yeah. And yeah, exactly. people will get you. Yeah, I think people, yeah, well, they'll, you'll, you'll just expand. But living in an English-speaking country, you'll definitely improve. So. <laughs> yeah. uh, there are many people that can't pronounce certain sounds that we make in English. What do you do to help with that? Um, people who can't pronounce, say it again? Uh, there are many people that can't, cannot pronounce certain sounds. So phonics? Yeah, I mean, it's repetition. Isn't repetition, it, yeah. Yes, yeah. yeah, so I think if just high, just uh, obviously this is from a, a teacher who needs a little advice. So if it's, it is, it is really the only way. Uh, there's many different methods. Mm. I kind of like tongue twisters. Many people hate it. So mm. it's just me, like I kind of like the challenge of that kind of thing. Um, but yeah, there's so many super different, su super many different, super many, many different methods that's available. So, uh, yeah, just try and try different things as long as the person enjoys mm. it. I'm thinking that I, I think it's helpful when you really explain like the position of the mouth and where your tongue should be and th mm. those kind of details, I think help quite a lot. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah. definitely so. Okay, great. I am caught up on the questions now. So, um, what advice would you give to a learner who is, is is in that situation where they don't know how to move forward? You know, those intermediate people. How would you advise them? Is it difficult, isn't it? Mm. So, how how do you think? Can, how can you help them to? How do you help them to move forward? Because they're a bit blinded. Well, I think that when you are at that level, um, you need to take a step away from the textbooks and um, trying to memorize bits of grammar and vocabulary. I mean, you still need some of it, but that is when you start making the language a part of your daily activity. Mm -hmm. So you, you're watching TV shows, you're listening to podcasts, you're reading things that are at your level everything should be at your level don't you know if it's too difficult you're probably going to give up so um i i think that that's important i think it, it needs to be not just coursework but daily routine and do you think that because i've been thinking about this for a while i hear this similar it's great advice but i, I hear this similar thing from many people but i don't know how many people take that step because it's quite a big step to make and um, especially when you're in a foreign country, 
and many people are speaking diff a different language around you, your native language, but they're speaking a different language. How can you take that step to help? Um, how do you think you can help ease those difficulties? Because that's quite a large, a large leap of faith to take to try and try and, to change your language into English to try and like think in English is what you're essentially mm. saying. Yeah. I mean, I, I don't know when that when that magic, um, you know, thinking in English, it, it just happens, right? Yeah, yeah. I, it's the, that, that I moment don't think when that's, you, yeah, you cannot plan for that. Many yeah. people want to, you can't plan for that. Yeah, I, I, it just happens. One day you'll wake up and you'll realize that you, you dreamt in, in, in another language. <laughs> mm. um, I guess my point was just that you, you have to make it a part of your routine and it might happen without you realizing that mm. it's happening <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know sure. you, you the more you listen to that podcast the more you'll start to understand it yes that's um, that is a good good point i think uh repetition to an to an extent is very very useful um not the same thing necessarily but also i yeah. do feel there's value in that as well if you're like a lower low intermediate learner who needs to get like those words just regularly you regularly hear them so yeah yeah, that's that's super useful. I think many people get stuck in that period, don't they? So, I think it's it's a super difficult step for them to take. But I think, um, and I think I feel sometimes it's very easy for teachers to reel that off, you know, regardless of the level of the student. So many teachers yeah. just say, "Oh, you just need to speak it. You just need to change your life into English." But it's not that easy for someone. In no, no, no. I know that. I, I just think that there's little little things that you can do. Take a part of your day just to listen to to it, and I think that it will yes. get easier. Yeah, but another thing is putting the time in. Definitely gives you rewards, doesn't it? At the end of the day, um, like we talked about earlier. Booking one hour a week with a teacher does not necessarily mean you're going to learn English mm. uh, immediately. But put booking an hour with a teacher for some speaking practice, then putting an hour into um, some grammar practice if you need it, or watching a TV show in mm. English without your native subtitles. I think those are all, there's many different ways. Those are very limited amount that I've said, but there's yeah. uh, many options for people if they want to improve, isn't there? Mm. Yeah. I think that people are often looking for the magic answer, and I don't think there mm. is a magic answer. I, I think that, yeah, as Bruna said, you, you, oh, I focus on the process. Okay. Yeah, it, it is a process, um, and I think that, that I lost my train of thought. <laughs> I, I think that you just have to practice. That's the answer. Mm. There's, you know, the, the more opportunity you give yourself, the more you'll benefit. Yeah, for sure. Um, yeah. So how long have you been doing your Insta profile for? Um, not that long. It's been yeah, less than two months, I think. Mm -hmm. Less than two and, months. And how do you feel it's going? Um, I love it. I have met so many amazing people from all over the world. Like, what an opportunity. Um, I, I see it as, a, as an opportunity to connect with people. That's great to hear. People. That's great to hear. Yeah. From my experience, I was in a part of a few Facebook groups with a few teachers in the past, mm -hmm. and they value their time as if it should always include getting paid for. So obviously Instagram is, n you don't get paid. Yeah. You, you put in your, a lot of effort yourself and you're always learning, always being humbled and then always being asked many questions, you know. So mm -hmm. there's a lot of free time being used. Uh, how do you feel about using your free time in this manner? Do you feel that the responses you get is more than enough for the time you spend? Yeah, I do. I mean, I think that, that sometimes I'm so moved by the messages I get. And I think that education should be accessible. Um, 
no matter who you are, no matter where you're from, you should have access to education. And each of us have something that another person doesn't know. I mean, anything. Mm. We all have something that someone else doesn't know. Why don't we teach each other? That's what it comes down to for me. Yeah, I, I 100% agree with you. And I think I'm glad from the, my experience, there's many great teachers that want to, are not primarily looking for the benefit of getting some quick cash, you know. They're, they're willing yeah. to put time in and try and help out students uh, in their free time. I think my personal opinion is it should, like, you don't need a teacher necessarily. It's all there for free if you really, if you're like, like my mum and dad and really put the effort in, you know, that old style of just going all at it. If you really want to, it's all there. Uh, but I, I teach her there's many benefits, direction and speaking practice, which is hella key, you know, yeah, super key. And um, But if you really want to, I've had a few today, like people message me saying, I need, I want a speaking partner or something like that. Can you help me find a speaking partner? They're all there. It's all out there. Yeah. You know? But you just need to, like, I think there's a lot of, a lot of worry for people with online as well these days, but it's all available. It is all out there for you. If you really want it, yeah. you can take it, but you have to put the effort in, don't you? It's true. And, um, how did we do anything before the internet? I don't know. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> that's what I, that's what I mean. You know, the internet, <laughs> yeah. like you said, it's opened up like, like you said, Instagram is an opportunity. The internet's opened up so much opportunity for people. Yeah. Um, not just on an English front on like, we can now look into another country and see how their like teaching system works and what can we mm. take from that to benefit our country's teaching system, you know? Like you can yeah. hear about the way that Finland experiments, the, not experiments is the wrong word, but um, the way they teach their kids their, yeah, their style of yeah. teaching and, and we can all learn from all of these different methods, you know? And if we didn't have the internet, how accessible is that? We're still waiting for it on a boat somewhere. You know, yeah. so it's, it's really fantastic. It is, it is. I mean, sometimes I, um, my mind is blown by, when I think to when I was like 12 and I was learning French, if I, and I was obsessed with France, obsessed. If I could have connected with someone in France mm -hmm. and spoken to them in French, I would have, cried with excitement it's so cool it is it's really cool uh, <laughs> i want to finish on a on a maybe a a difficult question oh dear do you okay. think it's necessary for a person to get a book to learn nowadays um no no I think that it can be useful to, hmm, this is a good question. Um, I don't think you necessarily need a book, but I think it's helpful to have a, um, like a syllabus, you know, mm. uh, some sort of structure to it. Otherwise, you're not going to know what it is you want to learn. Um, yeah. It also depends what level you're at, you know. Yeah, definitely. Um, um, but for the most part, I think that there's lots of, like, individual resources online. Might be helpful to... My mind's, like, going everywhere now. Um, <laughs> might be helpful to have a teacher help you to pick and choose. Um, Brenna says we need good materials. Um yeah, I'll say this. Instead of is a book necessary, I'll say a book on its own is not enough. Um, uh, that's a nice way to put it, yeah. Yeah, a book is good, um, but it's definitely not enough, especially when a lot of books teach you necessary English, but not real English, authentic English. Um, mm. I mean, every book I open says, like, how do you do? Can you tell me a time ever in your life you've heard someone say, yeah, how do you no, do? Yeah, no, I know. Like, <laughs> I know. Fucking hell. That's oh, part of my language. But yeah, there's, there's many of those, uh, 
those awful textbook examples, you know. Oh man, that's horrendous. Yeah, that is an awful one. Oh, yeah. But How <laughs> that's proper like <laughs> it, British oh, awfulness. Yeah, but yeah. guys, everyone who's watching, don't say how do you do. <laughs> yeah. Oh, how do you do? <laughs> and you? No, don't say that. Apparently, yeah. Um, but yeah, it's super interesting for me because it's again a psyche thing because I think personally to an extent there's always an extent with everything you know but I think a book is useful in the sense that when you use a book you know it's study time mm. whereas when you use online social media it's so easy just to switch off you don't have to focus yeah you know it's super difficult I think like because your phone can do everything it's so easy to switch from a game and and then go to your uh, look at the news and then decide what you want for dinner and then to go to study in. I don't think it's easy to concentrate personally. Mm. So I think like a book is like, here, sit down. This is my time. I'm going to spend an hour on this grammar now or something like that. There's, yeah. There is uh, like oh, an extent. You've done the same. <laughs> Fantastic yeah. job. I don't feel so lonely. <laughs> um, that was my kettle. <laughs> <laughs> there's like an extent to it. Obviously, it's not perfect, but I think, like, in terms of if you really need to focus, uh, I think a book is good, and it, it, mm. it directs you. It, it, no book is perfect. There's always something better out there, or there's always something better material somewhere, but if you need something just to focus you, and I'm one of those people, I can't mm. just concentrate on the internet and stuff, all those yeah. materials there, you know. Same as you, I always want to turn it back, like, before I answer someone's question about what they should do, I want to, like, think about myself as a learner, because we're learners, too. Mm. And if I was going to pursue a language, I would get a book. 